So, yeah, I'm going to talk today about Icon Cloud, and I'm going to give a brief overview about the models that consist of Icon Cloud and what is exactly Icon Cloud. So, it's a discrete event simulation flat, uh, platform that allows users to, to simulate cloud computing environments, but also the infrastructures and the energy consumed by the different devices that, that compose those infrastructures. The main idea behind Icon Cloud is to, provi to provide to users a set of components that they can combine and create bigger things. So it's the main idea of these level blocks for kids where they have a lot of blocks, a lot of bricks, and they can put them together to build a house or to build a rocket or another thing. So it's the same idea to combine them. Those hardware components, the users can, can build <coughs> servers, and by putting servers together, they can plug the servers by using a network, and they can build their own simulations on cloud computing infrastructures. So Icon Cloud is implemented in C++. It's mainly based on, on this build on the top of Omnet and IMET. Omnet is running since close to 18 years, 20 years, since 1999. And it provides to Icon Cloud a distributed and parallel environment, and also all the main cores, all the main um, handler for, for the queue of events. INET is a network simulator that provides all the protocols, applications, and, and other models to simulate networks. Um, I'm not going to go through this slide, but those are only a few of the protocols that are provided by INET. So it's possible to simulate different network protocols, like if version 4, version 5, wireless protocols, NTDS, etc. So on the top of this big monster uh, is built Icon Cloud. But what is the main difference of Icon Cloud with another simulators, with another cloud computing simulator? Um, Icon Cloud tried to be in, in the middle of, of these very specific simulators, like for example, DiskSim or, or GPU Sim Graphite, that they simulate the components in a very low level detail. And it tries to be in, in a halfway of also these large scale uh, simulator platforms that they can build simulations on millions of servers. So it tries to provide a set of models that are a bit more detailed than large scale simulators, but a bit more structured than very specific. So in this presentation, I will go through different parts and I will try to target the, the main differences that are within Icon Cloud. So I grouped in, in four main categories the, the different components, the different models that build Icon Cloud, and the first of them is the physical resources. So in the physical resources, Icon Cloud models different <coughs> types of disks, HDDs, SSDs, different types of memories, um, CPU with different number of cores, the, there are CPU models that has the, the models for the core, so it's possible to, to create uh, CPUs with different number of threads, network cards, and all the components has also the energy consumption embedded on them, and to model the energy, they distinguish between the different states. So the states, for example, for a particular CPU, all the performance states are governed by, by the operating system that depending on the load that it's, it has to, to perform, it has its schedule, it changes the states of the CPU. The fifth element is the power supply units. The power supply units are also modeled and it provides information about how much energy is lost in terms of, of heat, so what is, which is the efficiency of the power supply unit. The second set of models is the services and software. So on the top of, of the physical elements, there are three close to two main, main parts that one of them is the operative system, and the other part is the hypervisor and virtualization management. The operative system is mainly composed by these parts, and when a request from an application comes, through the operating system, the, the operating system redirects depending on the request coming from the application to, to one of those models. The first one 
that is the one controlling the, the different number of disks, is responsible to, to have the file systems associated to the operative system. So different file systems can be added, and in fact there are models for X4 uh, or for um, network file system, parallel file system, and others. In the case of this tree, <coughs> it's composed by two parts. One of the parts, for example, in the CPU is the controller is responsible to, to change the different states of the, of the CPU, depending on the load, and the scheduler um, models, for example, a wrong robin policy, and it's possible also to study different policies governing the, the CPUs. The case of memory scheduler is for providing random writes or sequential writes, etc. Um, the next one, the remote storage, is responsible, it's a specific or, or special part that is responsible to control when a request comes from an application to derive from the file system directly there, and this request goes directly through the network to reach the concrete node that has the information. The file systems, uh, it's possible there are models that provide to the user the capability to say which is the file structure and folder structure to be simulated and with the sizes of the files. So in this case, it's easy to model different environments around big data or another experiment. In the case of the um, virtualization, the hypervisor and the, the virtualization management, there are four main blocks. The part that controls the user accounts for the different kind of users that appear in the cloud with a particular manager. Each of one of those four components provides an API to implement new policies. So in the case of the memory scheduler, it's the same. It's possible <coughs> it provides models to, to um, simulate memory ballooning over provisioning, memory um, without over provisioning. In the case of the CPU, it's model the, the, the same credit policy and pools of, of CPUs. And in the case of the network, um, it provides two models that are very specific for, for cloud systems because uh, it's necessary to translate when a request comes from a virtual machine going to another virtual machine, the network doesn't understand about real IP addresses. So it's implemented a, a port address translation and a network address translation within the, the virtualization management. So the third block is the applications and virtual machines. In the case of the applications, there are different types of applications implemented within ICANN Cloud, web servers, the NASA Parallel Benchmark, one of them, for the networks or a map reduce. But it's possible to increase or, or for the users to implement different types of applications by using the APIs that are Linux-like provided. And I'm not going through all of them, but for example, some of them for, for the CPU to request compute, to request memory, to create files, or to, to uh, create connections. So it gives to the user the, the possibility to, to know in the flow of the application to create uh, their own application models. The right-hand part um, is uh, an API to create uh, MPI applications. So it's also provided and it's possible to simulate parallel applications. So in the case of the virtual machines, the virtual machines in ICANN Cloud are empty boxes in terms of they don't have real resources. So it's possible to put more than one application within a virtual machine and study the performance degradation between, between these applications on between different virtual machines <coughs> in, the, in the server. So it has a set of virtual resources, it has its own operative system, and the requests go through the operative, uh, through the operative system to these virtual resources. In reality, these virtual resources doesn't exist. Those, those requests are captured by the hypervisor, and the hypervisor, using the policies, schedule these directly to the simulated physical resources. Once we have all those components, <coughs> we can build a server. And with a server, we can build an homogeneous or heterogeneous data center. So by using INET, it's possible to, in this example, in this figure, there are three rows. And each row represents a different type of server. 
So in the first one, we have dual cores, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, two hard disk drives, or one hard disk drive. In the other case, there is four CPUs, two hard disk drives, so it's possible to combine them and to create different types of cloud data centers. Once we have this, the part that is missing is, is the fourth part, that is the orchestration and the users. So in Icon Cloud, it's possible to, to use to, to simulate the, the users and the scheduling policies of those users. So the, the tenants or simulated users are, are uh, entities that have their own schedule, their own demanding of resources, and their own demanding of applications. So in this case, when a tenant appears in the system, in the figure, it goes directly, it requests to the cloud manager the number of, of virtual resources or virtual machines that they want, like in OpenStack, for example, or so from there, the cloud manager has its own scheduling policy, and by using that scheduling, that scheduling policy, it access to the, to the data center and it locates appropriately the resources. It triggers a, a creation of virtual machines in those resources, and those virtual resources are given to the users. The users can, in that moment, the simulated users can, in that moment, uh, by using another scheduling policy, locate the applications as they want. So they can locate three applications in the same virtual machine, request for big virtual machines to locate more applications, or just request for small virtual machines to allocate one concrete <coughs> one, one web server, for example. How far is configured this? There are a huge amount of models. There are a huge amount of, of parameters within this kind of simulation and within this kind of simulations. So to solve, this, to, uh, to solve this, we created a, a GUI that allows to the users to, to parameterize um, the different components, memory, CPUs, the networks, and also to create, by drag and dropping, different types of scenarios, and to collect the results. It's possible to add a GNU, a GNU plot script to the, um, to the tool, and by using those GNU plot scripts, Figures like that are created around energy, for example. So, I would like to show a video. If I this is an example of, of one simulation that I ran the other day. So I'm going to, yeah, just a bit. This is the Omnet environment, and it's quite useful for for debugging and analyzing the, the different simulations because each component, each part represents the, the servers. So I ran a simulation with, I think that it was 200 servers, two switches, and two storage nodes. And each component can be shown. So this is a um, switch. There is, this is the internals of a node. And we can see how each component is represented here. This is the internals of the operating system, the internals of the different components. So if I jump a bit ahead, we can see the simulations running, for example, with a different set of applications, the users, the virtual machines, and how the messages are going and coming from the <coughs> systems. So I think that is quite useful and it's something that I, I don't see, I didn't see in, in another tools and and yeah it's quite powerful. So as conclusions, I, I could say that it's possible to, to simplify some models in order to make the simulations scale up and, and in terms of, of have a better performance. However, I can now provide also models to collect results from very particular or concrete systems that the other simulators can't. For example, the memory cache. Is memory cards or the utilization of memory, different models, or, or from a user perspective. Um, it's quite easy to be used. So running a simulation is just install the simulator, press on run, run an example. So it's simple. And configure new components by using the GUI is also simple. But incorporating new models can be hard. Obnet is a hard tool. Uh, 9.2 is a hard monster to, to try to learn, and the, the learning curve can be quite hard. And 
Yeah, that's more or less it. You know, we are currently developing new techniques for improving the, the for boosting the, the simulations, for improving the simulations. And we are working also on, on modeling because the, the models provided for file systems and the models that we have for file systems and, and disks are quite useful to simulate big data scenarios. We are working towards that direction and also towards uh, taking a look to different scheduling algorithms on hypervisors. And yeah, that's it. Thanks, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you.